up? It's me, Doc, from SampleKings.com. And this video is all about making your very first beat on your MPC Plus One. This also includes any other MPC of the current ones. MPC One, MPC Live Two, MPC Live, MPC X, MPC SE, MPC Touch, and it's MPC Renaissance, all the same thing. So here we do, we're gonna turn our MPC on, and now we want to load an empty project. Empty projects here. Next thing I want to do is I want to go into menu. I'd like to get some samples to start out with. So I want to go into my browser next. Get the browser. I want to do a search. So as you can see here, we are in content. That's the content on the machine. And then we're going to go to samples. We need to find some samples. I want some drums. You know what I mean? So we're going to look for some kicks right here. So we do a search through the directory. Press do it. And now a list has been populated with the kick drums. I'm gonna make sure the audition is on. That way, when I turn the data wheel, I can just hear sounds or tap a sound. I can hear what that sound sounds like. Once I find a sound I like, I press load. Now, there'll be a lot of kick drums there. Now next, I want to find something else, a snare drum. Press do it. And then our list is right here, all the snare drums, and you can hear them. Pick ones you like. Now the purpose of this is to build a sample pool. A bunch of samples I'd like to use or not use. HH is going to be for hi-hats. Normally that's how it's sort of spelled in these uh, libraries. Pick the ones you like. Now we are using the content from the MPC collection built inside the machine. So all those samples are still in here from all the demos and we want to use those. Now next, we want to organize our samples from a sample pool. We took a lot of samples from our content that we liked. Now we want to do, we want to sort of take that content and place it onto pads. Now here you can see we're in a sample pool and right next to browser and sample assign. And here we can assign everything you see on top of that list. It says sample pool on the left hand side. So we got our pads, which correspond to the same pads we have on our MPC. And we just tap a sound. And it's on that pad. Find our next sound that we like. And we tap the pad first. And then we tap the sound ones. See that? We're going to try and fill the pads up to as many samples we'd like to use for our first beat. Now you can go up your list. You can try and figure out which ones you like you're going to use. We tap that pad. There you go. Hit it once. Hit it twice, and then it's on a pad. We'll keep adding to it from our list. So when we were taking the samples in, we were just loading these samples into the pool. Pick what we like and what we don't like. Okay, we got six samples so far. Now we'll keep adding some more samples in. We want to get ready to actually have all these samples done and then we can start moving on to the next step. Now next, I wanna get these colors on the pads. I like my bass drums to be one color, my snare drums another, hi-hats, percussion, loops, 
everything has to have a color so I know which pad to hit. So the first thing I have to do, I got to go into the program edit section and go right there to pad color. Now I hit a pad. Of course, they're all the same color, but I want to go to single. So under empty pads, drum, go to single right there. And now that pad is that color. Pick my next color or just hit the next, there you go, the next pad. Now change the color. And then I want to pick my next pad. Those are my high hats. I like to keep those things yellow. Blue will be our snare drums. And snare drum type sounds. Now next, we're here doing purple. Then I'll pick the color of some other sounds too as well. Now those sounds at uh, 9, 10, and 11, those are loops. They have their own color, very light blue. There you go, right? That's almost like a pink there. Cool. We got all our samples checked out. Now, next, I'd like to get a pace, like how fast am I, am I going to record this at? So I choose to get a metronome up first, right? But before I even do that, I want to name the program that I've already amassed these samples in. And this program matches up with that kit or that parameter, which is the length. So as you can see here, it's, it's named drums now. We have the program right there, and it's 120. So I want to change that to another number. 120 is way too fast. Not worth all that speed. Now, 120 is better than 100. Not bad. Okay, that's 95 beats per minute. Sounds easy. There's number of bars. 60 note quantize. Cool. Now you can set yourself up. Okay. These are the various sounds I can have my mention on that. And I prefer the MPC click. It's loud enough and it paces the tempo perfectly. Now next, we've got to make a beat. We've got to create a beat and want to organize our structures. So when we start making our beat, it'll be perfect. So we want to check this out. We want to check out to make sure we are in record mode on that track. That's always important. You want to record where you want to record at. You make sure that that button you see right there turns red. That's the record mode. Now the first thing we have to do is organize ourselves. And so we want to probably label that track and say what it is drums, bass, or hi-hat, whatever, we're going to just name that track. Now, once it's been named, we're just about there, and we can actually record a sample at this point. Now, just playing back, I'll be off here. Set my metronome up. Yep, metronome's good. So 
and now it stops. Make sure on the right pad. And the right sequence. That says beats there. And that's channel one. So now I want to record the beat on top of this. Now I'm just going to go to overdub. And here I can just overdub any part I want to overdub onto the sequence. So we can add any part, hi-hats or other drums when we're in overdub. When record, it just erases everything. I can record over everything and record from the beginning or wherever I'm at. It will erase what's ever there. So now we're recording over again. parts here in overdub. As you can see, I just keep continually adding parts while listening back. I turn overdub off, I can practice now. Now here I'm going to erase the part. I'm going to erase that right over there. Yep, from that sequence, that track, and that bank. And next, I'll just press do it. Now that part's missing or gone. That's how you can erase real quickly within the sequence. Pretty simple. Press the erase button. Press the sound you want to erase, press do it. This is no repeat. That's 16th notes. Didn't record, as you can see, we're still practicing. I'm gonna record something now. Press down, no repeat. Sixteenth notes. And we're in overdub. I can also press the erase button down, then hold down the pad. I like to erase the events from the sequence, I do it right there and it's good. And we're back to record. 
corny again. And that works. This is a very easy way to record on your MPC One Plus or any MPC. The MPC One Plus, the MPC One, MPC Live, MPC Live Two, MPC X, and the MPC SE. All work the same way. Okay, that's it. Now next, what I want to do is get my pad volumes correct. I want to make sure all the volumes are going to be at levels I like. It's the best thing to always do is to get your drums tight with the volume. It's always important. So we're going to press shift and we're going to hit pad levels. And you can see right here, we're going to adjust our pad levels. Now once you're in this pad level control, you can tap a pad and then use a data wheel to just increase or lower the volume. As you can see there from the fader, if anything. The purpose of this is to adjust each sound to a parameter or to a level that we like a lot, you know? It can give us that flavor when it plays together. We have the kick drum right, the snare drum right, the hi-hats. Now this is all subjective. That means it depends on what you like. So as you watch this part of the video, just look what we're doing. We the same thing over and over, adjusting the sounds that we're using. This next section is about loops. I've got some sample sounds, I got three of them. I wanna make sure they loop at the same tempo first, then I'll set the tempo up, and then I'll make sure they'll work at any tempo. Watch this. That's the one sample. The second sample. These two play together. Good. Now next, we have a third sample here. Okay, you want to use all three of these samples at the same time, but they don't loop at the current tempo we have. So the first thing I want to do is find out what tempo they do loop at. And so here, as you can see, we have track two. It's my loop track, right? And now I want to do is make sure loop is there. Or the loop beats. And that's track one, and then there's track two. So now we're in our grid mode. I want to start out and put one event on the first. Then on the first here, on the, the right same line, they have another event right there. And that happens on three. Perfect. Now that should work. So as you can hear right now, the beat is rushing the sample too much. It's not in time. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to find a way I can get this to not loop. I want to get to the point where it starts and then there's a space and then it tries to loop again, like right here. And once that happens, I need to just increase the BPM gradually until it can loop. Space there still. We still have the same space here, but I'm increasing the BPM because we're getting closer now. The metronome's almost in time with it too as well. It's 
It's getting closer. That's almost it. That's about it. Now next I want to test it with the beat. I want to put the beat on and see how it sounds with the beat. I can make a better decision right here. Yeah, and I want to go to 78 now. Sounds much better. Now in this next section, I want to get these samples I have here, which are pads 9, 10, and 11. And I want to make sure I find the exact BPM for them. Once I find the right BPM, then I just want to warp it. And then... I'll put the BPM they're supposed to originally be at, and then the samples will be able to be played at any BPM that I select. As you can see here, I got 78 as the BPM. It's warped at 78. BPM is switched on. And then I go back to main. You can see it right there. It's 78. Yep. Now I'm increasing the tempo. And it still remains in time with the rhythm. I know that this one sample is in time, the other ones are also 78, I'll do the same thing to them. That's pretty good. So next what I want to do is get the other two samples that are loops, which are at 9 and 10, and I'd like to take those samples and sort of make sure they're going to blend in well. So we're going to take these samples and loop them up and see if they're all looped together and they sound pretty consistent. Let's do that next. Here I'm just adding these events for the three samples, and two more actually, for the other two samples, because they're the same length, and they're the same BPM I gathered, so I'm just going to make sure they start on the first two bars and then the last two bars, since it's a four bar sequence. And here I go to warp again, and I strike that first one there on pad 11. All right, that's pad 9. And I'm also going to make its BPM the 78, and I'm warping it too as well. Now I'm doing that with the next pad. Good. Now they're all warped. And we have the original BPM, which is 78. Now once I have the original BPM and I press warp, these samples will be able to be played at any BPM I select. what you have to do when you actually start getting samples in practice this bring a sample in if you know it, it'll loop and you can tap it so it loops 
you want to eventually be able to get the chance to make sure it can loop at any speed you'd like to loop it at so you can judge and see whether you want to use it or not. So now I'm going to go in here and write this. Matter of fact, it's already written. It says drums. It's good. Okay. We're back here, and this is the program edit. Now, what I want to do in this case, I want to change these samples so they're note on, not one shot. See, if I hit the pad, it just continuously plays over and over again. I really don't want that. I want to cut off the minute I, I press stop on the sequence. Now, what I have to do next, I'm going to go in here to the sequencer, and we're going to go to the grid mode. So I need to make sure I select the right track. Here's the track with the samples. So next, I want to go into grid mode, and I want to make sure I can set the start point, and then I want to extend the end. So now I'm going to extend the end out. Watch this. I'm going to make the end of each one of those events longer so it meets the next event. And what this allows me to do is that it allows the MPC to strike that pad and to hold it down as though it's holding down with my finger holding it down. It'll continue to play. But the minute I press stop, so will the sample stop. This way, we are not using like one shot. We're using note on for all three of these samples. Next time I press play. When I press stop, everything stops. I right, turn that off. And so here I want to set some levels. Now instead of going into pad level and using pad mix to level everything out, I can also go here and select the eye inside of the sequence. Once that eye opens up, you'll see we have the ability to change the level of the pads. So you can bring the levels up or down using the fader without leaving main mode. And we can hide it again. If I just want to adjust one sound, it's really cool to do that. And it makes it easier rather than going into pad mixer. Back into no repeat. Now we're in thirty second notes, some trap style. Notice too as the pad blinks. The velocity will change depending how hard I hold down that pad. So it'll receive velocity information from me as far as how long I hold it down. And also, it receives information to tell it to start playing or repeating this particular pad at this time correction value. In this case, it's 16th notes. That's how that works.
So now I want to do an edit to my program. And so I'm going to select another sound from the sample pool and hit the pad, put the sound there. And now it's in my program. So next, I go back to main mode. And now I'm going to press note repeat and I'm going to press shift. And now note repeat is locked in. It's not going to stop. This is how we latch it in. As you can see, I hold down the pad and there's no color to it, to it at all. I didn't add a color here, just add the sound in. It's always good to judge the sounds and change your sounds around as you do hear them to get an idea of what your mix is like and not all sounds need to dominate the track. Okay, so now we got these samples and everything else in here. Look for our loops. And we'll stop this. So we're going to go back in and sort of get levels that are going to be proper for us to play back. As you can see, there you go. Now you always got to make sure this is on pad. As you can see right there, it's on pad. And that way, I can just bring that certain pad sounds down. Let me press stop. So now in this section, while I have these samples going on and all the drums, I want to go into the grid mode. And here in grid mode, we can see what happened on the loop section to make it easier for us to stop and to be in note on rather than one shot. Now, as you can see, I can go from either track. I went from the loops to the beat. I can do it here in the main. And I go right back to here. And I'm in loops. I can go to main, to the beat, and loops. So I can go to beats. This is track one. And what we can do here, we can pinch. We can expand from left to right, squeezing left to right, and pinch. We can zoom in or zoom out to get a better view of elements inside of our grid. Now once I select it on the left hand side, every element inside of the grid that's on that pad bank or on that pad will have a white border around it. I can also select entire regions here, as you can see, by using the select tool. Next, if I erase tool, 
and erased all the regions or events that have been selected. Now we're back into the selection tool. And now I can, I have to go back to zoom here. There we go. And we can zoom in to any event that I see. I can also write, that's the pencil tool right there. Once selected, I can tap anywhere within the grid. And if I select, let's say, the drum area for kick drum or tom tom or let's say a snare drum, it will place a note there, depending on where I write in that event. I can use undo and redo here too as well. So you can see I can also move events. I'm nudging events in directions based on the quantized value of this sequence. I can also avoid that and use non-snap or don't snap. This way I can move along every increment that's available to me within the time and correction value. Now you can see here, I can also extend the front, not just the back end, as I did before with the samples. I can also extend the back end, as you can see right there, like I did with the samples, and make the events longer. But they're going to be based on the quantized value of the grid. In this case, it's 16th notes. I can also transpose these notes, which means I can go up and down anywhere where those notes tend to be. Like for example, there's a note right there for the snare drum. I can go up or go down with that and place that note anywhere within the grid. And we're doing the same thing right there. We're moving in the grid in terms of events based on the quantized value. Now this is my velocities. So I have velocities right here I've selected. And I can see the velocity for any event that I choose. For example, these are hi-hats. I'll go here to velocity and now I can change these velocities for the hi-hats. My finger becomes a pencil tool. As you can see, I can change the value of these events. I can select certain regions and change those events as well without changing others. Now from here, we're looking at the gear or settings for the grid. Now this is set in terms of absolute, so I'm gonna make sure it's absolute in my case. Now by tapping there, it makes sure that whenever I select the pad, all the events that are in the pad region will be given a white border. You can see I am in zoom mode, so I'm not going to affect anything. I just select the patch. You can see I can do that on the left-hand side. Oops, went to a different one. There we go. Back to this and grid. Now we go back to the gear box again. Now also in gear, we can follow, not follow, or go by pages. In this case, I can stretch it out, play from the start, And the playback, we can't see. Well, that one line goes across. We can see actually in the top that something's going by and it comes back again. This is non-follow. So I, want, I prefer to actually have follow on or page view. So my next selection here will be follow. Close that. And now you can see the 
playback head is following along over the events. As it crosses the event, that event is being played, letting you know where you are in the sequence in grid view. And our last available option here is going to be page. And as you can see, the page changes as the playback head moves over the grid, depending on the zoom value. Now you got to select what you like the best, but I do prefer follow. And so I'm back and right now. See, I'm writing a part in. I can write a part in right there. As you can see, I'm writing in some snare drum parts. I go back to grid mode. Oh, undo that. Back to my main mode. And now I'm changing my quantize value. And that's called timing correct. Zooming in in the grid mode as we're in the zoom feature. I select the pencil tool now. I want to hear this part back. And back to main mode. So now I want to go in here and I want to write in the name of the sequence. Because eventually I am going to save this. We need to save it and then check it, make sure what we saved actually works. And this is great for using your first sequence. Understanding everything here will help you to make your first beat on your MPC. We're going to play it back now. Everything's been named. We use a lot of different parts here. That's good. So next, I probably would like to save this. We're going to press save. And you can see right here, we have several options. We have project, project as. We have, we can say the drum program. I can save the samples. I can save the sequence. I can save any rack effects I might have created. I can do an audio mix down, or I can save an Ableton Live set. In this case, we're going to select the program. As you can see, our save program page opens up here, and it's untitled. So I want to title it right now. I give a title to this thing. Okay, we are putting this thing together. And then once I'm done, I press do it, and it's my first demo is the name of this project. I want to save it in my MPC documents folder, and I want to select projects, the projects folder. There's only one in here called test. So I want to save it inside of this document folder called Programs. And you can see on top, where it says Save, it shows you the destination of the file. And now it's in. Now, one thing I want to do now from this point, once I have it in, I'd like to pretty much probably go to New Project, It'll open the machine up. It'll erase everything in there. And now, as you can see, I have my first demo right there. I click on it, and now it will load up. And I'm checking to see if it's good. Well, let's press play to find out. It is there. And that's how you can make your first demo in the easiest way possible. 